Hi, this is Craig Stocks here at Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com, and we'd love to talk to you about hosting your telescope under our dark sky, or about an hourly rental on one of our systems. Uh, we even have a system that's available that you can rent by the month. So with that, let's look at what we're going to do today. Uh, this will be a little bit different. This is going to be focused really on a Photoshop technique. And I have got two different images of the core region of NGC 7822, also known as the uh, question mark nebula. This image, and this is a fully processed um, .psb or a large format uh, Photoshop file. You can see all the layers over here. So this was captured with the plane wave uh, CDK 12.5, which I really like that focal length. Uh, but it's a fairly tight view. Uh, it doesn't show all of the core area. And then I also have a wider view that was captured with the 16-inch Dream Scope, and this is the one that's available for monthly rental. And what I want to do is combine uh, these two images. They're both fully processed, still in layers, and color mapped in SHO. And I want to combine those into one single image that combines the best of both. So stick with us, I'll show you how to do that in Photoshop. Okay, let's get started. And first, let's look at the two images. Um, as I mentioned, these are in layers, and if you look at the layers, you can see I've got the sulfur on the bottom, and then oxygen, and then hydrogen, and these are in layer groups. And the colors are all applied uh, in these three layers. And then I have some global adjustment layers, and then lastly, the stars are on top. And this, both files are structured the same way because they're both SHO files. Uh, this is the, the closer view, and it has the same structure with the stars on top, and then some global adjustments, and then we have the sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen at the bottom. And let's just look real quickly at the structure of these three layer groups. The sulfur I normally put on the bottom, and that's going to wind up being red. And it's red because the other colors are provided by the layers above, so red is all that's left. If I turn that layer off, you'll see the red disappears from the image. And it's very simple. It's the <clears throat> original layer, and I've got that converted to a smart object so that I could apply a, a smart sharpen filter. Uh, smart filters applied to smart objects are really the way to go for a non-destructive workflow because even though I you know, created this file a couple of days ago, I can still come back if I double click on the Smart Sharpen filter, for instance. It opens up the dialog box, shows me the settings. I could adjust those settings if I want to, click OK. And I've now applied a different Smart Sharpen um, set of settings to that layer. So, you know, everything is non destructive, and that's the way I like to work. So, this is the sulfur. Uh, and it's just a, a plain layer. If I turn off everything but the sulfur, which I can do by alt-clicking on the eyeball, you'll see that it's just a monochrome layer. The oxygen layer uh, is very similar. It has the uh, oxygen data converted to a smart object. It has a, um, an adjustment layer. There's a burn and dodge layer. And what that does is let me selectively lighten and darken different areas a little bit. And you can, this is just a blank layer in the soft light blending mode. And then you can paint on this with a low opacity brush using either black to darken or white to lighten areas. And then this top one is just a curves adjustment in color blending mode. And that lets me adjust the color of this. This layer is also restricted, and you can tell that by the little. Uh, blending options icon over here. If I double click to the right of the layer group name, it'll pull up that blending, blending style. And you can see that I've got the red channel turned off. And so this layer is only providing green and blue. So in effect, at this point, what it's created is an S for sulfur, 
in OO because oxygen is green and blue. And then I use this curves layer to adjust the amount of green. And I just do that by targeting the green curve. And then I can adjust that up or down to change the amount of green in this uh, SOO image. And actually, I could reducing it a little bit makes it look even better. The oxygen layer, or I'm sorry, the hydrogen layer is third. And this one is in a little bit different approach. Again, we've got the smart object, a levels adjustment layer. And here I'm using a hue saturation layer in colorize blending mode. And this is kind of the universal way of, of coloring. Uh, the way I did the oxygen is a little less common. Uh, if you look, for instance, at the way the Hubble or James Webb images are, are processed and colorized, it's like this, uh, where they use a hue saturation layer in colorized blending mode, pull the lightness down to about you know, 30% saturation at 100%, and then you can adjust the color of the hydrogen just by sliding this hue slider back and forth. So if you want it to be more green, more orange, or somewhere in between, and as so you can just very easily adjust this visually to get the um, the ideal color balance for for that. So that's the the three color layers: sulfur, oxygen, and hydrogen, creating an, an SHO image, and then global adjustments uh, in the stars on top. The one from the DreamScope uh, is exactly the same structure. It has the sulfur, oxygen, and hydrogen color mapped the same way, uh, and then some global adjustments. It does have this <clears throat> little hydrogen copy here, and what it's doing is brightening this dark nebula in the center because it was tending to get too dark. So, and you can see there's a mask, so it's just bringing a little bit of lightness back in here. So, in order to combine these, and let me talk about what I want to do. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to copy this whole image, this whole document, into this one because I'm copying the one that's going to be a smaller field of view into the larger one. And then we'll use the stars to align the features in this image to this image. So everything is lined up. And then we'll just grab the sulfur, oxygen, and hydrogen layers from this one that we've copied over, and we'll just move those down into these same layer groups. Uh, and we'll probably have to use a mask to blend it a little bit, uh, fine tune the adjustments, and then we'll have our new image that combines the best of both. So the first thing I want to do, I want to select the stars layer group on top because I want to copy this entire image on top of the stars so I can use the stars for alignment. And I'm going to start by just putting this whole image into one layer group. So I'll just select all the layers, control G, and that created a, a new group. And I'll just change the group name to Line Wave. And now I can use the Move tool, which you can also get to by just tapping the V on the keyboard. And I'm just going to click and drag this image up to the image tab for the DreamScope image, pull down into the image, and let go. And that's going to copy this image, and it'll take a few minutes. This winds up being a, a really large file. Uh, each one of these by itself is about uh, eight or nine gigabytes. Uh, when you combine them together, you wind up with about an 18 gigabyte file. Uh, so it does become a big file, and when you copy it over, it does need to copy and update all of the smart objects. So it'll it'll cycle through and update these these smart objects, and I say it'll take about a minute or so. It's done copying over, so you can now see we have the plane wave image sitting on top of the DreamScope image, and you can see it's segregated into its own layer group, so it's easy to work with. And just to free up resources, I'm going to go back to the plane wave one and close this file. And I don't need to save it. Now, this may get a little bit laggy uh, because my computer's, like I say, it's an, about an 18, 19 gigabyte image. Uh, plus, I'm running the, uh, the screen recorder. So things may get a little laggy here. But what I want to do 
is first open up this group and turn off everything but the stars. So now we have just the stars turned on. And I want to put this, eventually we'll put this into a, uh, a difference blending mode, but right now all we have is the stars. And you can see if I move it around, we're just, those are the stars from the plane wave. Uh, this bright star is obviously this bright star, so we can start by lining that up roughly. And now I want to use free transform to adjust this image, size, rotation, whatever, and use the stars to line everything up. So I'll go into free transform, which is control T, and that gives me these adjustment handles. Now, this little target reticle in the center, uh, that's going to be, Photoshop will treat that as the center of the image. And if I drag that down, remember we lined up this bright star. If I tell Photoshop to treat that as the center, now if I rotate or symmetrically change the size, it'll change relative to that as the center point. So let's start by grabbing this top right handle. And I'm going to hold the shift and alternate keys, and that tells Photoshop to change the width and height together. So we're just making it smaller. And you can see these stars. You know, well, these stars look like they match up with these stars. So I'll just move the cursor outside the rectangle and rotate. And again, we're rotating about this as the center of, of rotation. I'll adjust the size a little bit. So this is a little bit of an iterative process. And once I get it close, then we're going to change the blending mode and be more precise. Okay, so now I'm going to come up here to the top and go to some of these small stars in the top left corner. And I'm going to change the blending mode, and you can do this while Free Transform is active. Right now, this whole layer group is in pass through blending mode. And I'm going to change that to difference. And so now you can see these little black circles around the stars. And I'm going to just move this with the cursor keys to nudge it over a little bit. And what I'm doing is lining up, I'm watching this star right here. So now I've kind of lined up that dark circle in the middle. Actually, I can go even a little bit further if I look at this star. Over down, there we go. So that's that star is very nicely centered. Now I can grab this center reticle and move it up here and put it right on top of this star. And now I'm going to pan down to the bottom, and you can see we need to change the size a little bit. So again, I'll hold shift and alternate. Now we're resizing everything relative to that star that we lined up at the top left. Make it get it about the right size, and then we'll have to adjust the rotation angle a little bit. So now we have the stars at the bottom right lined up, and the star at the top left was already lined up. So now this whole image is lined up based on centering the stars from the plane wave image on top of the uh, one from the Dreamscope. So at this point I can just click OK, and we now have everything aligned. And again, it's going to, because we've changed the size, <clears throat> it's going to go through and update those smart objects. So this will take a minute for it to complete the transform. So the transform is done, and we have the plane wave image now perfectly aligned with the one from the Dreamscope. And I'm going to come back to the plane wave group, and for now I'm just going to put it in pass-through blending mode. And what it's actually doing is just sitting on top. Uh, and of course we have everything else turned off. Let's turn on all these other layers. It doesn't look very good right now, 
but we're going to fix that. So for now, I'm going to turn this layer group off. And let's just start moving the layers down. So from within the plane wave group, we'll start with the sulfur. And I'm going to start with this smart object. And I've already got a levels adjustment layer that went with that. So I'm going to grab both of these, the smart object and its adjustment layer. And I'm going to copy or drag it down into the sulfur layer. And I'm going to put it on top of the layer and the adjustment layer from the sulfur. So click, shift click to grab these two layers and I can just drag it down into position and let go. Now to blend it, I'm going to do two things. First, I want to create what's called a, it's called a clipping mask. What I'm really going to do is clip this adjustment layer that goes with the plane wave image to this plane wave image so it's not affecting anything else. And to do that within the adjustment layer, there's a little icon here that will create a clipping mask or clip this to the layer below it. If I just click on that, you see it moves in and there's a little arrow pointing down showing that this adjustment layer is clipped to this layer. I want to average these together so that I have the total time from both. They are both uh, three nights of data. Uh, they're roughly the same amount of data for sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen. So what I'm going to do is just average them together 50-50. Now, the easy way to do that is if I go to the layer that I put on top, which is the plane wave layer, right now it's in normal blending mode at 100% opacity. If I want it blended 50-50, then it would be just 50% opacity. So I'll change this opacity to 50, and now we have 50% of the sulfur is coming from the plane wave, and the other 50% is coming from the dream scope in this central part. In the rest of the image, it's 100% of the uh, dream scope. And it's that easy to combine them together. So let's do the same thing with the oxygen. Uh, again, I'm going to come down here to above the adjustments that I made for the oxygen. I'll grab the oxygen from the dream scope. Grab those three layers. Drag them down into the oxygen group. Put it right there. And I want to clip both of these to the layer below and put this at 50% opacity. And now we have our oxygen averaged. So let's do the hydrogen next. Let's close the oxygen. Here's the hydrogen. We want these two layers and we'll just drag those down into the hydrogen group. Drop it right there. Clip that adjustment layer and put this at 50% opacity. And we now have these blended together. Now the color balance is a little bit off and you can see that there's some some perimeter. So let's start with the oxygen because it looks like the oxygen is a little too bright. I start with the oxygen that we brought in from the plane wave and I'm just going to darken it a little bit so that it blends in a little bit better. And I want to put a layer mask on each one of these. So I'm going to start with the oxygen. I'll add the layer mask, which shows in white here. And then I'll just, with the brush tool, I want to paint with the black brush at 100% opacity. And I'll use the left and right bracket keys to make it a little bigger or smaller. And I just want to darken or mask around this perimeter. 
and I can actually paint straight lines if I click once and then come down here hold the shift key and click hold the shift key and click shift key and click and we have now created a mask that goes all the way around this layer and we can copy that mask to the other layers Let me close this up so it's not in our way so we want to copy this mask that we just created for on the oxygen and copy it up here to the hydrogen I can click on the mask while holding the alt key and drag and drop and that will copy that mask and then we'll do the same thing with the sulfur I will alt click and drag and so we have now masked the transition it looks like we've got a little bit of transition that's still visible here I'm not sure if that's yeah that might actually be a feature there and you can always check by just turning that that layer off and on I think that is a feature so it seemed like a lot of work moving things around but the end result is I don't have to completely reprocess everything I've already processed these two images and by dragging those images into this image uh, and just using a simple drag and drop uh, I've already done all the work of figuring out the color balance and uh, I've got the stars in here I do like the stars from the plane wave so I think what I'm going to do is come back to this this plane wave group and I'm going to turn on just the star layer so that means I'm going to turn off everything else and I think these this whole group needs to be in screen blending mode so that picks up the the stars from the plane wave group and there's a basically a finished image by just copying and pasting from one image into another image putting those layers in the right spot um, two techniques that we really focused on one was using the free transform and the difference blending mode in order to be able to line up the stars so that they are exactly centered uh, the other thing we did was average those two layers together by putting the upper layer at a 50 percent opacity so at 50 percent opacity that means half the data is coming from the layer below half the data is coming from the layer above so they're 50 50 that's averaged so that's a way to do it i hope you found this useful if you have any questions, be sure to drop those in the comments below. Uh, and as always, I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky. Thanks. Mm -hmm.